Hello and welcome to some more RuneScape news and in this video we're going to be talking about Jagex being for sale and some quest changes coming up very soon. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. In case you haven't heard by now, according to different news articles, Jagex has been for sale since September of 2023. I've been waiting to cover this bit of news until we got a little bit more information on it and well, we finally did. Yes, it's likely that Jagex is going to get passed around again, and it might be happening very soon. According to an article shared by Sky News, which is a news-based company in London, the Luxembourg-based CVC Capital Partners is in advanced talks to buy Jagex for 900 million British pounds, or the equivalent of 1.05 billion euros, or 1.135 billion US dollars. According to the article, CVC wasn't the only capital venture interested in Jagex and had seen off competition from a number of rival bidders and could sign a formal agreement to buy a controlling stake in the company within days. So this could be happening very soon. Now, based on the article and a couple of Google searches, you'll quickly realize that CVC has spread their investments pretty much everywhere over the years, from logistics to healthcare, Breitling watches, Formula One, and apparently the Sky Betting and Gaming Company. Yes, you heard that right. A gambling company that experienced significant growth before CVC sold it in just three years for 4.7 billion US dollars. I guess you could say that they have some experience with gambling companies, huh? I also think it's worth noting that the article claims that a number of other private equity firms expressed uncertainty about Jagex's business plan and development pipeline. I quote, denting hopes of it achieving a reported £1 billion valuation. I wonder what details are hidden to the public there. Hmm. Either way, the Carlyle Group is making some money on Jagex. I have no idea what is considered to be a good rate of return for a gaming industry investment, taking into consideration the value of money deteriorating over time due to inflation and some expenses, but nearly doubling their investment can be bad for what seems to be a short holding period. It's definitely not a failed investment for sure. Now, new owners will affect the game. There's no doubt about that. It could be for better or for worse. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, but I'm leaning towards the worst side because... When the game gets auctioned off again, you know, another sale comes around the corner, the game will have to flood more microtransactions in the game or raise the price of membership or do something else. It just makes sense. The company needs to look as attractive as possible. The numbers need to be high and the future needs to look bright. Literally no one, especially these large private equity firms, want to lose money on their investment. Let's move over to some RuneScape news. Modstu's Game Jam project is coming to the live game very soon and judging by the post, I'd say it can't come soon enough because this these changes are long overdue. According to Modstu, many quest requirements serve neither a narrative or functional purpose, and thus he has been working on simplifying the requirements for over 40 quests scheduled to release on the 19th of February. One quest in particular that is highlighted in the post due to the amount of changes and its importance in any RuneScape account's progression is the Desert Treasure quest. You know, the quest that unlocks Angel Magics and is a pre-requirement for the Templates and Tiston quest, which will unlock you curses, which any PVMer needs. While this does seem like a yippy moment, it's not like you're going to be completing less quests to gain access to major questline rewards. It just means that, for example, the Temple of Ikov quest won't be required for Desert Treasure, which means you'll be able to gain access to those ancient magics a little easier, as it has nothing to do with the quest, and instead is a requirement for the Curse of Arath quest, which is still required for the Temple of Sintistan, or Wolgothic Sleep's quest. So at the end of the day, you're still going to be completing the same amount of quests, but the order in which you complete the quests is going to be different. Some things that do affect how early you'll be able to start a quest, though, are changes to the skill requirements themselves, which are sometimes not even boostable. As an Anders quest will no longer require level 58 prayer, between a rock will be able to be completed by defense pures, and the rewards themselves will be converted to lamps, which is going to be, again, beneficial to pures. The Curse of Zaro's mini quest will no longer require level 31 prayer. You'll be able to complete the Desert Slayer Dungeon mini quest without level 70 Slayer. Dream Mentor no longer requires a combat level of 85. The Enter the Abyss mini quest will no longer require the Rune Mysteries quest and instead require level 5 Rune Crafting. That's a change I didn't see coming. The Fairy Tale Part 3 quest will no longer require summoning and magic level requirements. So again, the 100 or so players that have summoning pures will be able to complete this quest. And the King's Ransom quest is also being adjusted again for obviously what is a pure account. There's also a couple of quest point requirement changes. The Swan Song will no longer require 101 quest points, and Wanted will no longer require 33 quest points. There's also a section of miscellaneous changes, or what seems to be even more stuff coming to the game on the 19th. 
think of changes like an NPC giving you a certain quest item as the pre-required quest is being changed or moved. As a spacebar warrior spamming through quest dialogue, I don't recall every single quest step, but I do remember getting an extra gout weed was very annoying as gout tubers are expensive and you would have to grow them to get gout weed. Well now, or should I say starting from the 19th of February, you won't need to do that in the Dream Mentor quest. In addition to quest requirement changes, there's also a notable quality of life change to the In Memory of Mario Q mini quest, which will no longer have a 10 day time gate to build all the statue plinths. All in all, this is going to be a juicy package of quest improvements that are, like I said, long overdue. Sure, it's not something you'll notice unless you make a new account like an Iron Man account, but for new players, this is fantastic. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.